Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I am of the stars and I'm sitting here at beautiful Navajo Lake right now in the afternoon waiting for my crystals to absorb some some of the the winter solstice sunlight which is already starting to pour into earth for the last few days. It's been astounding. And um, I was looking at the revelation of St. John the Divine in the Bible, chapter 8. And um, I thought I'd read right now chapter 8 and then offer uh, just a short commentary on it from an ascension point of view. Uh, and I should warn you in advance, I've been rereading chapter 8 for a while now, and I don't see much, uh, many good predictions in it. So be prepared. And here it goes. Chapter 8 <laughs> And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer. And there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar, and cast it into the earth. And there were voices, and thunderings, and lightnings, and an earthquake. And the seven angels, which had the seven trumpets, prepared themselves to sound. The first angel sounded. And there followed hail and fire mingled with blood. And they were cast upon the earth. And the third part of trees was burnt up. And all green grass was burnt up. And the second angel sounded. And as it were, a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea. And the third part of the sea became blood. And the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died. And the third part of the ships were destroyed. And the third angel sounded. And there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp. And it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters. And the name of the star is called Wormwood, and the third part of the waters became Wormwood. And many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. And the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon and the third part of the stars. So as the third part of them was darkened, and the day shone not for a third part of it, and the night likewise. And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, Woe to the inhabitants of earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels which are yet to sound. So this very last verse is the cliffhanger, isn't it? It's been building up all through the chapter. A lot of bad tidings, hasn't it? A lot of things that might cause consternation. And um, at the very end, it, 
It's an angel flies flies by saying there are three more angels yet to go and they're not and they're a lot worse than what what we were talking about just then. Well, it's here once. You know, this is the thing. As Earth changes to new Earth, I mean, it already has changed to new Earth, but as the minds of men adjust to this, it can seem to us that there's just a, a, a great deal of um, worrisome things happening in the third dimension. Uh, and so some of this, some of this I can speak to from from prior history of Earth, and some I can't, just referring to chapter 8, because chapter 9, you'll find, is, is also quite a lollapalooza. <laughs> so the first angel, when the first angel sounded, it says there followed hail and fire mingled with blood, which were cast upon the earth, and this burnt up the trees and the grass. Uh, this, the best I can do with this is that it might be describing a volcanic eruption. Yes. And the second, when the second angel des describes or shows a vision, that's, that's a lot like in Hawaii, the lava going into the sea, it, and it reads like this, And the second angel sounded, and as it were, a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood. Yes, that reminds me of those clips I've seen of, of lava from of volcanic eruptions, uh, flowing down into the sea in Hawaii and how the the sea boils with the heat of the lava. Uh, of course, it's not an exact uh, description of that, but but it's reminiscent of that, and that may be what is meant there. The first two, uh, the first one would be something like the the um, the volcanic eruption and the the great cl clumps of. Um, matter that are thrown out of the volcano and might be landing on people and hurting them, burning up the grass and like that, the trees, yeah. And the second, the, um, the flow of lava into the sea. Let's just say that's one natural explanation for that. So there may be volcanic eruptions is basically the way I interpret the first two. And uh, then it says there's, there's great loss of life. Ships and the creatures in the sea. Which would make sense if it were a sea rather than the ocean and there were a volcanic eruption. I see many references to a third in this section, and to tell the truth, I've been thinking about this chapter for a long time, in the, and whether to take one third literally or not. But um, I'm I'm thinking that what's really being said here is that uh, if if we don't let go of our minds and feel Christ consciousness, Christ's love and faith in Christ during the time of ascension, then it's going to seem really difficult. It's going to be very fearful. And uh, when it says the destruction of a third, it may be de just saying, be careful. Uh, and we'll see more of this later be careful because things are going to be very tough. That would be the non-literal interpretation of a third of everything just being destroyed. And that's the one that I tend to favor. Because, you know, timeline-wise, we have the uh, option always to optimize our timelines and to, to loop forward into a more abundant and beautiful future, a more peaceful future, and bring that loop uh, right back. To the present, so so we have the free will and the co-creative ability not to experience the types of fears and and um, scariness that other people may or may not be feeling, 
as things change, we have the ability to be copacetic about the whole thing. So, so, you know, that's, so it's totally up to us is what I'm saying. It's, we're not at the effect of, of whatever goes on. This was true in the times before Ascension, too, that we had the, the ability to, to, to feel our hearts and feel love and feel grateful and thankful for all that is in the darkest times on earth before. And the more so now as the tests and tribulations come faster and faster. Really, these tests and tribulations are just um, the shadow that presents to our minds in in the great light, in ever increasing light of Christ consciousness that's coming into Earth. All the more so now, for the last few days and onward into the winter solstice, which will be a whole month from now of of glorious light coming into Earth. So, so we can we can sit and and say to ourselves, my goodness, what shadows are cast by this bright light. <laughs> and we can just look at the light, you know. <laughs> so we have that choice now and to go on. The third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp. And it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters. And the name of the star is called Wormwood. Um, it it's, sounds very catastrophic. It, uh, it reminds me of the descriptions of, of meteors that had come into the earth, you know, and, and burn brightly. And um, um, see, it would, could be described as burning like a lamp. So this might be a meteor. I don't know what it means about making the waters like wormwood and men dying of the waters because they were made bitter. I'm not sure what that means, but but in general I think this has to do with a meteor. And um, the fourth angel, and we're just going to the fourth angel on this chapter. And the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars, so as the third part of them was darkened, and the day shone not for a third part of it, and the night likewise. It reminds me of a kind of concatenation of stories about eclipses here. So uh, eclipses of the moon, eclipses of the sun, that's what it seems like. So, so, so basically, the first four, the first four signs here, the first four angels that are sounding, are saying that the natural order of things is interrupted by uh, signs, signs from the heavens, uh, and signs from Earth too, like earthquakes, like um, perhaps a comet uh, lighting up the skies. And um, and maybe eclipses of the sun and moon, and but the description in in this chapter eight is you know much more dramatic than that. So so in general, I'd say as as the as the light comes in this November and December, as the, as the light of solstice comes in. The thing to do is to is to get out of the mental mind, get out into nature, sit in nature, and and if possible, place crystals on earth and let them absorb the sunlight all day long. Say a little prayer if, that the uh, say a little prayer that the sun. It was a rabbit, I think, <laughs> over there, that the sunlight will will come straight down to the earth and bless everything on earth, including our minds, you know, everything on earth, all the people, all the animals, all the rabbits, all the waters. Pretty soon we're going to be doing chapter 9, and I can only imagine what interesting things await us. <laughs> so, until then... Yeah, don't let the mind get the better of you. You can go with all kinds of scenarios of the mind, or we can just step out 
into the natural world and ground and experience the ecstasy of creation. So it's up to us. We, we get to decide. And so, and the other thing I'm thinking is, uh, I did see like a sign. I, I look for signs all the time, like the Native Americans do. I look for signs in everything, not just sunlight, but just in the way the wind blows and the way that, that people smile and the way that, that the, the, the green grass comes up on earth. And just everything that I see is a sign to me of the way that the creation is going and the, God's blessing to earth is coming in and like that. And the, uh, sometimes I see wonderful signs and sometimes I see signs that are the product of the mental mind that, um, that is causing humanity such woe, you know, because the mental mind, if it likes anything, it likes to stay the way it is. <laughs> <laughs> so and, and now everything's changing. So what I saw in the last week are signs of anger. Uh, I was in the store and in a small town near where I live, and and just after there had been um, uh, two two young ladies, relative young ladies, I think. I was told this story. I had gotten into a fist fight in the parking lot. And I'm here to tell you, this never happens in our community. It just never happens. And so that was a, a strong sign. When the light comes in very strongly, one reaction that people can have is irritability. Yeah, physical irritability. So, so there are ways to manage anger that don't have to do with actually acting out. If you're the ones that were there doing that, you know, I'd like you to know that you that you provided a good uh, uh, milestone for the, for the rest of us because others are having that trouble too right now. And I appreciate that you provided that, that milestone for us and I hope that we will be able to, to deal well with feelings of irritation and anger when we can't get out into nature. And so, uh, so there's that, just, uh, just a reminder. I think that the trouble that happened in in um, Paris just a little while ago uh, had to do with anger and uh, too and so it could be that what's clearing right now is anger and so those of us that are w w way showers and light light bearers the thing to do is to sense the anger of other people sense our own anger and then sit and transform all the, those emotions through the heart and that will allow us to, to distance empathy, the feeling. whole uh, with neutral mind. So, <laughs> heads up. Chapter 8. I've been delaying. And that's because, it, you know, it. I don't want anyone to feel fear. That's the one thing that we need not do. Because through faith in Christ and hope in Christ... And by feeling Christ's love and believing and understanding the, the love of Christ that manifests right now in earth and in many wonderful human beings, we, why should we ever feel fear or anger? You know, we are human. We do do these things. But let's pull back from it the moment we can and, and turn to the new, turn to the great, wonder of the light, love, and joy. <laughs> Y'all take care. Till next we meet.